why do you have bacon shoved down your pants? <laughs> From Seattle, Washington, originally. That's where I grew up. I get to go home. Sure, thank you. More people than blueberries. I like it. <laughs> I love going back. Every time I go home now, so I get to see my parents. They still live up there about twice, three times a year. And every time I go home now, and I, haven't, I have this problem, though, because when I go home now, I haven't seen my mom in a long time. She's inched a little closer toward insanity. So, and it's not a gradual thing, because I'm not around her, so it's very jarring for me. It's like when you haven't seen a little nephew in a long time, they sneak up on you how much they've grown. That's like my mom, but with crazy. It's like, oh my goodness, mom, last time I saw you, you were only like this crazy. Now look at you. What are they feeding you, lead or something? What's going on? Why are you freezing the milk? Yeah, she freezes the milk. You're like, why? Why would anyone do that? And I'll tell you why. She goes to Costco, right? She buys nine gallons all taped together to save the 87 cents or whatever it is. <laughs> then it's just her and my dad in the house. She's locked house intolerant. They're never gonna drink that milk. I don't know who it's for. It's apocalypse milk, okay? So what are we, I don't know. And we didn't do that growing up. This is new. This is something she picked up like three years ago. I don't know from where. So now I come home. She don't even have a good, see, if you're gonna freeze milk, you need a system. Here's what you do. You put a regular milk in the refrigerator, just ready to go. And then as that gets used up, you move in a frozen milk to defrost. So you have a seamless milk transition. Now, <laughs> right. I come home and again, hadn't seen my mom like six months, right? And uh, I open up the, and I, and I, pour myself a bowl of Cheerios. I'm in the kitchen. It's very nostalgic, it's kind of nice. You know, I'm very excited to have these Cheerios. I open up the fridge, you know, and I grab the milk, it's heavy. Oh, it's a good sign, right? You got a heavy milk, it's going down, Cheerio time. Unscrew the lid, turn it over, nothing's coming out. It's an iceberg. <laughs> I know what to do, what would you have done in that moment? You just set it out on the counter and wait six hours? I'll tell you what I did, I microwaved that milk. That's what I did. <laughs> Yeah, and how long? How long do you microwave milk for? Nobody teaches you that in high school. I hit the popcorn button. I wasn't sure how long. There was no milk defrost. My mom is slowly and sadly losing her mind button to press. So then I come home another time. And again, hadn't seen my mom in like six months, you know? And I open up the front door and the first thing I see is her. She's standing at the top of the stairs, but she has her back to me. And she has what appears to me to be a pack of bacon shoved down the back of her pants, like halfway down her butt and the other half sticking out on the small of her back. I was alarmed. So I asked what I thought was a very important question. I said, hey mom, Merry Christmas. What? Why do you have bacon shoved down your pants? <laughs> and she yelled at me. She got mad and yelled at me. She goes, Andrew, it's not bacon, it's ham. Okay, cool, all right, well, I'm out of here. I, uh, sorry for wasting your time there, ham pants. It was a stupid question. You know what, I'm just gonna try and catch this flight. I think if I go. Now you guys are really confused. They're like, come on, what's going on? Well, she hurt her back, okay. Yeah, she injured her back, she didn't have an ice pack, so she shoved frozen ham down her pants <laughs> to heal herself, which I was like, why didn't you just use the milk? You got a number two ice pack in the freezer. So it's always nice to come home, get a little home cooking of milk popsicles and butt sandwiches. It's great every time I go back. It was a big travel day for me Saturday. It was a sacrifice. I gave up my HGTV Saturdays. That's usually what I'm doing all day. Anybody else on the HGTV Saturday? Oh my, it's every day. I love it. It's my favorite channel, but I will say that channel's a little biased, okay? It's biased toward homeowners, all right? Every show on there is for the wealthy homeowner. Flip my house, fix my house. Where are the shows for the renters? Broke people like me, where is my show? I wanna see a show called Get My Security Deposit Back. That's what I wanna see. Just two lazy contractors showing up at apartment. Uh, we're gonna patch a lot of holes, uh, sell your roommate's weight bench on Craigslist, and figure out where that popcorn smell is coming from today on uh, Get My Security Deposit Back. I am uh, 
broke. Any broke people here tonight? You guys know <laughs> One way I like to combat being broke is I like to eat at continental breakfasts at hotels I'm not staying at. Yeah. Yeah, you can just do that if you want. Do you guys want free breakfast tomorrow? Anybody? Yeah, I'll tell you how to do it, okay? It's the easiest thing in the world. Here's what you do. Get up before nine o'clock. That's the hardest part, right there. Get up before nine. Go over to like a Hampton Inn, make a waffle. Yeah, that's it. Get the heck out of there. That's the whole caper. They can't stop you. It's no Ocean's Eleven. Let me tell you something. No front desk employee making nine bucks an hour has the balls to accuse you of that ridiculous crime. They're never gonna say anything. I've literally done it like a dozen times in my life. Now, I'm cocky. I'm the John Dillinger of breakfast stealing. They gotta be at every hotel, I only gotta be at one. Say something to me, I dare you to say something to me because I have the best defense in the world. If you ever accuse me of that, I'm just gonna act incredulous. You just get upset. It's like, what's that? <laughs> okay. No, no, I got it. Let me get this straight. You're under the impression that I got up this morning got in my car, drove all the way to your stupid little hotel. Oh, I'm sorry, picked up my fiance, drove all the way to your stupid little hotel, started eating all the eggs and the bacon and the sausage. Oh, and this peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I have saran wrap back here. What's that, my lunch? I'm gonna get two free meals out of this. They would fall over themselves, apologizing. Yet that's literally what I do, step for step. Every Valentine's Day, that's how I, that's how I knock it out. Call it brunch, the Slater household. Despite that fact, she married me. I'm married, I've been married now for a year. We recently celebrated, thank you. So if anybody needs any advice, <laughs> no, I'm just, I, uh, we like it. I like being married a lot, so far so good. I will say, what I like most about it is having a family, you know? We, I have a family now, and we don't have any kids, so it feels like a cheat code to family, because we're just two adults living together. It's not that hard, you know? But I like to use that word to make myself sound more important. So that's how I talk now. I say things like, I provide for this family. <laughs> hey, I'm going to Provo to provide for this family, which sounds better than, hey, I made my half of the rent this October, so what's up? <laughs> Can I watch my shows? <laughs> I want to watch my shows. But she's broke like me, okay? She didn't have any money either. We're just two broke people in broke matrimony. That's all it is. But I will say, I'm better at being broke than she is, just to be honest with you, okay? And that's not a gender thing. It's just our personalities. And I'm not even talking about stealing continental breakfast. That's master class, broke guy stuff. I'm talking about the basics, all right? Like when you guys cheat people, when you go to the movies, what do you do to save money? Okay, uh, someone said rob the place. That's too far. Take it back a step. Just easy now. Bring in your own snacks? Yes, that's right. Sneak in your own. So I suggest this to my wife, right? I'm like, and she's on board. She's enthusiastic about the plan, but her execution is off because we're walking through the mall, right? To go to the show. She stops at C's Candy. No, no, actually not how it works. You don't sneak candy into the theater that's more expensive than what they sell in the lobby, okay? Yeah, that's doing it wrong. It's like, oh, I know. We'll save some money, we'll pack a lunch. Let me just swing by the airport really quick and grab a sandwich. <laughs> a little picnic in the Delta Terminal. I got a tuna sandwich for $13.99. <laughs> Not the deal I'm looking for. Here's an, here's an overrated idea when it comes to being married, I think. This is what everyone said, and I found this to be overrated, that when you get married, you can't hang out with your friends anymore. I don't find that to be true. But here's an underrated idea when it comes to being married that I found to be true, is that when you get married, you can use your wife as an excuse to not have to hang out with your friends anymore. I can't tell you how many times I've thrown her under the bus to not go to stupid poker night. Oh, she doesn't even know. She wishes I would go. She's like, go, what? And I'm like, no, I got the old ball and chain over here. I can't go suck down your cigar smoke and lose $90, sorry. We, uh, you know, my, we live in Los Angeles, California now. That's where we live. And uh, yeah, you like it there? It's nice, right? We don't live in a great neighborhood. When I first moved there, I was always coming up 
with ways to make extra money, you know? I was coming up with schemes because I was broke and I just moved to LA. And if you're ever in Los Angeles and you need to make money fast, a great way to make it is to return lost dogs. <laughs> yes, if you see, the reward money is insane. If you see a loose dog in Los Angeles, just grab it. Just grab the dog. It's a, the cuter the better. They will pay you for it. I saw a poster at a coffee shop recently. It said, lost dog, reward $5,000, right? And then underneath that, it said, no questions asked. I think there's gonna be some questions. <laughs> Otherwise, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find the first animal I see on the street. I'm gonna bring it to these people like, Psh. what is that, a cat? That sounded like a question. <laughs> I was told there wasn't gonna be any. So if I get my five grand in cash, I'm looking to avoid any tax complications. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you, yes. They're crazy about their dogs in Los Angeles. It's gone, it's gone too far. People love their dogs, it's gone too It's gone to the point now where if I don't stop and pet a stranger's dog, people take it personally. <laughs> they get upset if you don't pet their dog. I was coming home late at night. This guy was letting his dog go to the bathroom on the parking strip, no leash, okay? So I see this dude, stranger, dog, no leash. I walk wide around him. As I'm walking around him, he yells at me with all this attitude. He's like, um, he's friendly. Yeah, that's how he said it, just like that. Um, he's friendly. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'm not friendly. Did you ever think about that? Maybe if it gets too close, I'll bite your stupid dog. I don't want to touch your dog. <laughs> but like I said, I, my neighborhood, not as nice. Now, we have lost pet posters, but ours is a little weirder. Like, we have a lot of lost birds in my neighborhood. I saw a post the other day, it was for a lost parrot. Somebody lost their <laughs> parrot? And I had a picture of the parrot. It's like, that's great, and I appreciate the effort, but I'm not gonna be out here differentiating between loose parrots, all right? If I see a parrot on these streets, that's your parrot. I'm not gonna be, oh, no, no, no. Do you see in the photo? The eyes are too close together. That's not the same. He didn't have the tattoo on the left. It's not, I'm not gonna go into that detail. Lost parrot, picture of the parrot, right? Reward, $1,000. Yeah, $1,000 for a lost parrot. That's not a beloved family member somebody wants back. That's a parrot that knows too much. That's what that is. <laughs> they put a hit out on that parrot. They're afraid it's gonna talk. <laughs> Moved to Los Angeles, I had no money. I was really broke, you know? I was always coming up with ways to make my, I, I, start, I had to get a job, I'm so broke, I had to get a job at Best Buy and I don't know anything about technology. I'm telling you, I know, I'm the worst. And so they put me in the back. I was working in inventory at the Hollywood Best Buy, and I, the, the thing that sucks about that is you still have to wear the blue shirt. You know the blue polo shirt that says, please ask me questions, and I try to just stay in the back, do my job, lift the boxes. Every once in a while, you gotta do a carry out. I walk through the store, of course, people are gonna stop me, like, excuse me, sir, which one of these TVs? Okay, I have the 14 PSL 47 cable with the 18 hexagon Q. It's like, you know what I know about this TV? It's heavy, that's what I know. It's really, really heavy. This TV, oh yeah, this one gave me a hernia. So why don't you buy old hernia vision over here and leave me alone. I worked in inventory at the Hollywood Best Buy. I was by a long shot the only white dude in my department. It was just me, which is cool, but I will tell you, they, my coworkers treated me differently, okay? They were too nice. You know when people are suspiciously nice? Like you walk into the room and saw all of a sudden the air kind of changes. It's like, hey, hey, Andrew, great to see you there, pal. Let me help you with those boxes, Mr. Slater. And I was like, what is going on around here? And I finally figured it out. I figured out what was happening. They all thought we were on that show, Undercover Boss. That's what they thought. <laughs> they thought I was the CEO of Best Buy, which is... You know, humbly. I'm sure they were wondering why the CEO always needed to ride home. <laughs> like, CEO needs a bus pass. Maybe they thought, maybe I, it's understandable. I do look older for my age. People like to tell me that all the time. I'm 32 years old. People always guess older my whole life. People have guessed like five years older than I actually am, which I don't know if anybody else has that problem, but I, I don't get upset about it. But what I want to know is when did that happen in my life, right? Like, at what point does your face shoot out five years ahead of your age. Is there just a bad year in there somewhere? Because all I know is you're not born like that, right? No one's born looking old. It's not like my parents were showing me off as an infant. Like, oh, what is he, five? No. He's six months. Yikes. Six months. Was he smoke or something? He looks awful for baby. 
keep that little raisin out of the tanning booth. I don't know what you're doing there. So I gotta be healthier, right? Gotta, that's, maybe that's the way to be youthful. I gotta work out more, get in shape. A lot of pressure in Los Angeles to be healthy. I, I, here's the problem, because yeah, you know, I'd like to lose a couple pounds, but I, everyone in America is too fat, right? We have an obesity epidemic, they always say, and I know what the problem is. It's too expensive to eat healthy, right? It's more, right, it's more expensive to eat healthy than it is to eat unhealthy. Like, like my friends told me, Here's what you need to do, eat organic. You'll lose weight if you start eating organic. So, okay, I saved up. I went to the Whole Foods, right? Got an organic carrot. Yeah, singular. Could price them by the 12 bucks for a carrot. It's ridiculous. You know how embarrassing it is to take a carrot back from the cash register? You're like, oh man, can I exchange this for an almond Snickers or something? I don't know. I take the same 12 bucks to McDonald's, I can clean out the joint. Just shut them down for breakfast. They're chanting my name, I'm making it rain with Egg McMuffins. I'm amazing at McDonald's with 12 bucks. Like my favorite food is blueberries, right? Blueberries, good. Woo! Sure, one giant blueberry fan, I love it. <laughs> okay, well this, this is for you. So, they're good, good and good for you. However, so expensive. Do you ever buy one little tin of blueberries out of season, organic, you'll go broke. They're gone in two seconds, but I figured something out now. now Every, here's the new craze, frozen yogurt. Everybody loves the self-serve frozen yogurt. I got them all over my, by my house, this uh, place called Yogurt Land, right? And what you do, you get your cup, pick out your favorite ice cream, you fill it up, pick out your toppings, you pound your toppings, they weigh it, you pay for it by the pound. It's a great deal. Well, blueberries happens to be one of the toppings at this Yogurt Land. <laughs> and they forgot to make a rule that you have to put frozen yogurt in your cup. Nobody ever said that. Yeah. That's right. So what I do, I get the biggest cup they have. I fill it up with just blueberries. If you're buying bl blueberries at frozen yogurt prices, you're getting a pretty good deal right there. It's a very <laughs> light fruit. It's like the best farmer's market you've ever been to in your life. I got a whole drawer full of broken Oreos at home if you guys want to come over. Just bring over some milk. trying to eat healthier. Sometimes I want to eat healthy like at a restaurant. I go out to eat, you know, I want to eat healthy. And I can't even pronounce, this is what stops me, is I can't pronounce the names of the healthy foods on the menu. Does anybody ever have that anxiety? I went out for breakfast and I was gonna get this bowl of granola, right? And it had this berry in it. And the berry is spelled A-C-A-I, right? So I saw that and I told my friend, I was like, I'm gonna have the Akai bowl. That's what I said. Yeah, and he laughed at me like you did, pretentious person. Yes, he laughed. And he said, Andrew, it's pronounced acai. <laughs> hey, did you have a stroke? What happened? What? <laughs> trying to order breakfast. What, what are you, I'm, I'm not saying that. Oh, it's like a goof on Andrew. Say, get him to say that in front of the waitress. I'm not getting it, right? Then, like quinoa is good for you. You like quinoa? That's good for you. And I can say quinoa, no problem. However, do you ever see it spelled out on a menu? <laughs> right? It sucks all your confidence away of how to say that word. You're like, oh, I'll have the quinoa. What? That's, that's queen. You know what? I'll have the acai bowl. I'm sorry, no? Akasi, what? I'll have the queen Latifa bowl with the... You know what's easy to pronounce? Breakfast burrito. Then I just... <laughs> Roll off the tongue. My favorite restaurant is Wendy's. Oh man. It's my weakness. I love Wendy's. It's my favorite restaurant. You want to know why I love Wendy's? It's the classiest of all the fast food restaurants. It makes me feel good. I walk into Wendy's, the first thing the guy says to me is, uh, is this going to be for the dining room? Uh, I was just going to go sit in one of those smelly booths. But if you have like a five-star restaurant back there, I'll just grab my Biggie Coke and my salad spork. Table for one, I guess. I didn't make a reservation. Is this okay, what I'm wearing? I'm Sometimes they give away that they're not that classy at Wendy's. One time I went to Wendy's and I paid for my meal with a $5 bill and the man behind the counter proceeded to hold the bill up to the light. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. I counterfeited a fiver. It's all part of my high risk, low payoff scheme. I'm going to 7-Eleven later, knocking it off and making away with a take a penny, leave a penny trade. It's gonna be brilliant. <laughs> Stay tuned. Now, Wendy's is so classy, they have an app at Wendy's. 
Anybody have the, any sad, sad people have the Wendy's app? <laughs> I wanted to get it, okay? I love Wendy's, I wanted to get the Wendy's app. But like I told you, I'm bad at technology and I have an iPhone 5, okay? That's pretty good for me, but I have an iPhone 5. And here's what you need to know about people with iPhone, when you have an iPhone 5, that means you have storage issues, all right? <laughs> and everything I download on my phone says something about my priorities, okay? And the question becomes, how many pictures of my wife am I willing to delete to download this Wendy's app? It's quite the conundrum. It's like, man, my dog in this video looks really cute running on the beach. However, I need this double stack in my life right now. So that's the thing, I'm trying to be, trying to be healthier, you know? LA, there's so much pressure to be healthy. I started working out. I, you know, I'd have the laziest workout method ever though. I got. And this is, the only la thing lazier is what I did because I got the Fitbit. How many people have the Fitbit? Anybody, yeah, do you like it? I quit the Fitbit, how lazy is that? that yeah, I say, I'm not, what's this, all this walking around? I can't be doing that constantly. For those of you who don't know, a Fitbit, you wear it around your wrist, right? And it counts your steps. And I'd have two goals every day. My first goal is to get 10,000 steps in a day. And my second goal was to tell my friends 10,000 times a day how many steps I have left. That's how a Fitbit worked. <laughs> But I quit. And the real reason why I quit is because I got sick of the challenges. People would challenge me to see who could get the most steps in like a weekend. And I found out people cheated. People cheat, do you know that? There are Fitbit cheaters out there. What is the motivation? Why do people fit it cheat at Fitbit? I'm so mad I can't even talk. Why do people cheat at Fitbit? This guy, here's what he does. It's diabolical. He takes his Fitbit, right? He shoves it in a sock, okay? Then he wraps the sock up he puts a sock in his shoe, he takes his shoe, throws it in the dryer, turns it on for 45 minutes, and he's getting like 60,000 steps a day. He's winning every contest at work, and they can't figure it out. It's like Bill's fatter than ever, and his feet smell good. This doesn't make any sense. I don't know, why are you smelling Bill's feet? Yeah. trying to be more athletic. I'm really more of a sports fan, you know? I'm a big uh, Seahawks fan. I'm from Seattle, Washington. Anybody? Yeah? Big Seahawks fan. Do you guys wear the jerseys? Do you like sports fans? you wear your jersey proud? Yeah? I like it. Some people think it's stupid. They're like, oh, you're gonna wear a jersey with the name of another man on your back? That's so pathetic. You're, I don't care. I think it's fun. But here's where I draw the line. I was in Boise, Idaho recently, and they have a minor league hockey team in Boise, Idaho. I forgot what it's called, because why would you remember such a thing? So I was walking to my show, and this guy is walking to the game, and he's wearing a jersey of the minor league hockey team with a name on the back. He bought a minor leaguer's Hockey jersey, that's taking it too far, okay? I, you can't, first of all, you make more money than that dude. You can't wear his jersey, that's pathetic. It's like, just give him the $40 you spent on that jersey, he'd be way happier. Wait till after the game, give him the 40 bucks, and he'll wear a jersey with your name on the back of it. He'll be so happy. Every time I go home, I learn something new, right? Here's what I learned last time I went home. You can tell exactly how old someone is by how far away they sleep at night from their cell phones. So think about that. Anybody in here under the age of 30? Right, yeah, okay. I know where your phones are when you sleep. Yeah, within arm's reach at all times. Either on the nightstand, you're like an old detective with a gun under the pillow. In case something goes down, you're ready to tweet. You will Snapchat any robber so hard and put the little doggy tongue on him and make his head spin. Now I come home, getting hand see my mom, you know. She's asleep in her room, it's early in the morning, and I see her cell phone, and she's in her 50s, you know, and her cell phone's in the kitchen while she sleeps. I was like, wow, I'm 32, that's far. That's far away to be from your phone at any one time, right? Now here, my grandparents, they're in their 80s, they, got, they share a cell phone, and they got their very first cell phone recently. Yes, they got their very first cell phone recently, and they keep theirs at the Verizon store where they bought it. They said, <laughs> Every Tuesday, we'll take the number nine bus, drop you off right down there, check the messages. What's the big deal? It's like, I don't know. It's a good point, I don't know. <laughs> I have brothers, I have two brothers. I have a theory, I have an older brother and a younger brother, but I have a theory about siblings. I think the eldest sibling 
and every family should make the most money. That's what I think. Yeah, the eldest should make the most, the next kid should make the next amount, and the youngest should make the least. Because that keeps the power dynamic the same. It keeps the relationship together. It's how it was when you were growing up, right? They're in charge to all the way down the ladder. And here's how it works, just so you know, here's how it works in my family. Me and my older brother combined make about $44,000 a year. That's where we're at. I'm a comedian, he's a PE teacher. We both wasted our education, just totally screwed up. Now, my younger brother is an accountant, right? And he makes like $100,000 a year. And yeah, okay, rich people, yeah, you know. You can count all your own money. It's amazing when you're an accountant. But it's because he makes all this money, it's ruined our relationship with my brother. We can't hang out anymore because we were awful to this kid growing up. We beat him up all the time. We never let him play Nintendo, never thinking he'd grow up, get rich, and take out economic sanctions against us. Because that's what's happened. You know what he does? He changes his Netflix password. Yeah, on Friday nights, he waits till he knows it'll do the most damage. Yeah. It's humiliating. Me and my wife are here, trying, we're trying to watch Sherlock or something, now I gotta call this little piss ant and beg? You know what I want, give me the password. Don't ask me how I'm doing, just give me... All right, Heidi, write this down. G-E-T-A-J-O-B... Oh, I get it, that's clever, that's really... I mean, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, you know. But I will say, all my friends are dumber than me. I have all stupid friends. By round of applause, how many people in here have stupid friends? Now, by round of applause, how many people are here tonight with their stupid friends? Did anybody make the point? Okay, yeah. So enthusiastic about it. All my friends are dumb. Okay, I don't think I have any smart friends when I really think about it. But I will say, I've studied stupid people, okay? And I've, and I've figured something out. Dumb people, they're, here's the unifying characteristic is their favorite thing to do it's ironic but it's true stupid people love comparing themselves to geniuses they do they love it they can't get enough of it dumb people love comparing themselves to geniuses i had a friend who dropped out of college right it's a dumb thing to do and he goes oh yeah well uh bill gates dropped out of college <laughs> ever heard of him it's like, yes i've heard of bill gates but he was trying to start a billion dollar software company you thought you were going to get called back by The Bachelorette. They didn't, okay? It's not the same thing. Oh, well, it took Thomas Edison 3,000 tries before he got the light bulb, right? Yeah, but every time he screwed that up, he was like writing notes down on how to do it better the next time, experimenting, trying things. You try, your, you try your iTunes password wrong the exact same way, 17 times in a row, and when you can't get in, you throw your computer out the window. It's not the same. The dumbest person, stupid people love comparing themselves to geniuses. The dumbest person I ever met, I caught him wearing a shirt with a picture of Albert Einstein on it, right? And I had a quote from Albert Einstein. It said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Yeah, and I was like, yes, to him. <laughs> Einstein's imagination is more important than his knowledge because he already knows everything. <laughs> you, on the other hand, don't know anything. So your imagination is useless, actually. You're stupid and you imagine stupid things. That's how it works. Your imagination's like when we're stuck in traffic and you go to me and you go, what if everybody just went? <laughs> no, like what if we all just stepped on the gas at the same time? Wouldn't there be no traffic? I don't know, man. You know what? Why don't you try it? Why don't you try it? Kill me now and get me out of this awful conversation, please. Sometimes my dumb friends, they don't even compare themselves to geniuses, right? They'll compare themselves to great people in general, like great athletes. Like I have a friend, he'll screw something up, you know, and he'll go, hey man, if I went three for 10 in the major leagues, they'd put me in the hall of fame. It's like, yeah, but they're trying to hit 99 mile an hour fastballs. All I asked you to do was to pick me up from the airport, okay? If you go three for 10 on airport pickups, they put you in the jackass hall of fame. That is a horrible airport pickup percentage. 300 is not cutting the mustard. I 
like I said, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I was on a plane recently, and I like to pay attention to what people do on planes. You know, most people pass the time, and they like to read a book, you know, listen to a podcast. But I saw the oddest thing. I was flying a couple weeks ago, and I saw this guy, and he had a big beard, and his pastime on this plane was to do math. Yeah, now I'm not talking about a Sudoku or like a math worksheet. I'm talking about a blank yellow legal pad starting in the upper left-hand corner and just, and just mathing, just going complicated <laughs> equations, stuff nobody knows, okay? And first of all, that's suspicious, all right? I see something, I say something. That's not right. <laughs> We don't know what that is. That could, that could be a bomb. I don't know how, how math works. He could be working it out right now. First of all, that, and secondly, it's rude, okay? It is rude to be that smart in public. You can't do that to people like me. How am I supposed to enjoy my entertainment options now with you beautiful minding it over here? I can't watch Kung Fu Panda 3 now. It's embarrassing. I want to know if he Kung Fu's the other pandas. I had the dumbest thing happen to me that's ever happened to anybody. Nobody can beat my dumb guy story. I, had a, I got a text message from my stupid friend, and it said, have you seen that show, Small Town Security? It's great. Now, I hadn't seen the show, and I was busy, and I just forgot to text him back. It happens sometimes, right? Two days go by. I get another text from the same idiot, and it says, I know, I love it. And I was like, what? It was two days later, it was out of context, and I, I thought, oh, maybe he texted the wrong person. That happens sometimes, you know, so I ignore that one too. A couple seconds later, I get another text about the show. It's like, oh, when that man turned out to be a cop, I was like, who are these for? Who are you texting right now? You're texting the wrong person, and that's when he explained it to me. The dumbest thing that's ever happened. He said, oh, I saw that text I sent you two days ago. I thought that was a text you just sent me right now. And I was replying, to my own text. He was texting himself. He texted himself using me as a very annoyed conduit, which I think we can all agree is a very stupid thing to do, right? <laughs> However, like anything that dumb, there's a little genius in that, if you think about it. Now maybe, any single people here tonight? Single people? Okay. Now maybe, you meet a cute guy or a cute girl after the show, you get their number, it's exciting, you're, but you're also nervous. You're not sure, do I text them right away? Do I wait a couple days? Text them right away. Just fire it off. Say something like, hey, you wanna go out sometime next week? Oh, but then they ignore you. The worst happens, right? Two days go by, you haven't heard from them. Don't worry. Just send them another text. Sure, how about Wednesday, eight o'clock? That work for you? They're trapped. Congratulations, you have a girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> Don't actually try that, by the way. Like I said, me and my wife, we don't have kids, but I do think one of the most beautiful things you're ever gonna see in the world is a parent reading to their children. You ever go out in the world, see parents taking the time to read to their kids, it's a lovely thing. However, there's nothing funnier in the world than when you see a parent mispronouncing words from the children's book. Have you ever seen that before? That will make your afternoon. I saw a friend of mine one time and she was like, and then the ball ricocheted off the wall. I was like, no, no, nothing ricocheted actually. Uh, uh, can I say something there? Am I allowed to speak up? Or is there a number I can call to prevent SAT disasters from happening? It actually reminded me of a few years ago. I was in Boston with my dad and we were walking through the park, the big park, Boston Common. And if you ever go there, they have these duck statues, okay? And he sees them and he stops. He goes, oh, Andrew, these are the ducklings from that book. I was like, what book? He said, make way for ducklings. That story I used to read you every night before you went to sleep. And I was like, I don't remember that. It's like, yes, you wouldn't sleep until I read you this story, Make Way for Ducklings. And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about, Dad. And that's my point here tonight. If you guys take anything away from this show, please just remember, reading to your children is a waste of time. They won't, they're not gonna remember. In fact, the only thing you might do is pass down your mispronunciations of words. And trust me, you do not want that weighing on your conscience. It's a terrible uh, burdon. Bur bur You'll never be able to order quinoa at a restaurant ever again. So.
Now, I moved to Los Angeles about six years ago, okay? And like I said earlier, I'm, I was trying everything to make money, make, you know, ends meet. And one thing everyone suggested to me is like, hey, you should be an extra. You know, there's people in the background of movies or TV shows. When you do that, you get a hundred bucks for the day. You get free lunch. And I thought, cool, I'll do that five days a week. 500 bucks a week, free lunch. That's it, that's it. I'm rolling, that's fine. I'll retire at 55, American dream, right? Well, here's the problem. Too good to be true. They never called me for it. They, they never, two years went by. They, I didn't hear from them once. Apparently, they had enough six-foot pudgy white dudes in the background of things already. They didn't need any more. So, but finally, one day, I get a phone call, right? Hadn't heard from two years. I get a phone call, and they, and they uh, say, are you available? I say, yes, yes, I'm available. I hang up the phone, and then I remember the Seahawks are playing the 49ers the next day on Thursday Night Football. Now, I'm a big fan. I didn't want to miss the game, so I called them back. And I said, hey, I left a voicemail. I said, hey, I'm really sorry, but my grandmother just passed away. I can't. Oh, I know. And I always feel the judgment. I get, maybe in Utah, you don't use the dead grandma excuse. But let me tell you something. I've used it 17 times now in my life. And every time I do, she just gets stronger. Like she always, I'm telling you, she pulls out of something. I think she's living off the spite of it at this point. So now here's the weird part of the story. I make my excuse. I figure it's over, right? They call me back. They don't need me for two years. They call me back. They're like, hey, we need you. You said you could do this. We'll pay you double if you show up. It's like, oh, uh, my grandma just woke up. Turns out she's asleep. <laughs> Heavy sleeper, old grandma, I'll be there. So now I go, right? And they don't tell you what it is ahead of time. Uh, they keep it like a big secret. So I'm walking, I don't know what I'm doing. And they're very rude to you. Extras are the bottom of the totem pole. So they have no patience for you. And I walk in and, and they're, they're, me, they're like, who are you supposed to be? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm Andrew, nice to meet you. Like, no, who are you supposed to be? Well, I'm supposed to be a comedian, but to be honest with you, it's not going that good. So that's why I'm here. Who are you supposed to be? I was like, I don't know. Finally, someone said, he's Leo. I was like, who? Leonardo DiCaprio, you're the great Gatsby. And I'm like, wait, I'm Leonardo DiCaprio? They were like, yeah. I was like, well then why y'all making eye contact with me right now? What's up? Oh, uh, the Kale Caesar salad and a 22 year old supermodel stat. But they didn't give me that stuff because I wasn't really Leonardo DiCaprio. What I was was a stand-in. I was supposed to stand in, you know, and pretend to be Leonardo DiCaprio while they reshot the scenes for the real Tobey Maguire for that movie, The Great Gatsby, which I don't know, did you guys ever see that movie, anybody? Yeah? And to be honest with you, I see some skeptical faces out there. You're like, I saw that movie, I don't recognize you. You don't look nothing like Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay, but what about now? Yes. That's the most Leonardo DiCaprio back of the head in the business. They pay double. I can do any Leo movie. For, this is Titanic right now. Titanic. Hold on. Wolf of Wall Street. Isn't that incredible? So now I gotta do it, right? They dress me up, they put the, you know, put the suit on me. They cut my hair to look like the back of his head, you know? But like I said, they're rude because he puts this watch on me and the guy goes, that's the most expensive watch you're ever gonna wear. <laughs> wow, okay. Well, now it's the most expensive watch you're ever gonna have stolen from you. So, <laughs> congrats on that. I put in the old false address back there. Good luck finding me. <laughs> two things, two takeaways from because we do the whole thing. Now, everybody there was a stand-in, like me. We were all pretending to be actors except for Tobey Maguire and there was a girl there she was standing in as the Jordan character in the movie and I thought she was really cute you know so I stole her information off the call sheet <laughs> yeah it's a good move asked her out and that's how I met my wife yes it's a true story thank you everyone always asks it's a true story and the second thing that happened was now all my friends refer to me as the great Fatsby so there's a good and a bad to every fairy tale. Thank you very much, everybody. My name is Andy Snyder.